Alright, it's 31 past 10. Let's get this session kick-started. Um, we're presenting in on here on behalf of Bumble on the total addressable market and the market penetration. And basically how we are marrying internal data and external geospatial data. Um, let me first give you a bit of an outline. We'll introduce ourselves. Then we're going to why we did actually embark on this project. Marcos then goes through the more technical stuff of the city cluster generation, the calculation of the population, and we'll wrap up with all the use cases that this will enable and a little bit of a future roadmap of what this project, or let's just call it even a work stream, has to hold. First of all, what better way to introduce ourselves than by our own Bumble profiles? Um, I'm Bobby, leading business insights in Bumble. Quite passionate about data visualization, storytelling, design thinking, and my personal life, I really quite like board games, pub quizzes, reading. Yeah, uh, thank you, Bobby, and thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, I'm Marcos, I'm 29, originally from, from Argentina. I'm passionate about data and I'm passionate about geography, as you can imagine. Um, yeah, here my profile is not very uh, fulfilled, so don't follow my example here. The more filled your profile is in Bumble, the more likely you're, you're, you're uh, getting matches. So, um, but yeah, I'm passionate about tennis and football. I'm a sports fan. Yeah, yeah. profile completion for us is important. So yeah. Mar Mar Marco's profile doesn't really cut, cut it right now. <laughs> Still needs to fill it up a bit. So let's introduce Bumble. Basically, as Bumble, we're the overarching corp company having two different apps. We have our flagship Bumble app, predominantly in English-speaking countries, and we've got our second app, Badoo. Um, and both of these apps are operating under the uh, Bumble umbrella. Um, our mission is to create a world of healthy and equitable relationships. And currently, we're operating in over 150 plus countries in 85 languages. And we've been on quite a bit of a journey. We went from private to private equity owned in 2020. Then we went public in February. So we've been quite on a roller coaster journey. So it's been a really, really interesting time at Bumble. Enough about Bumble. Let's get to the project itself. So if we look a little bit on the right side of the slide, historically, we've looked mainly at active users, monthly active users or daily active users. and Obviously, because you have geographies of very different sizes, the United States having a massive population, Brazil having a massive population, but other places like Singapore or Israel being much smaller in population, you don't really know what your market penetration is if you have a certain amount of monthly active users on your platform. So if you look at this fictional example here, right, and all these numbers are made up, if we have a user base of 1.5 million in the United States, what does that mean? Is that a lot? Is that a little? What's our potential to grow? Have we tapped that market? We don't really know. At the same time, if we have 1 million people in Spain, is that a lot compared to the United States? So we needed that ex uh, new perspective to sort of contextualize whether our monthly active users did actually mean whether we had tapped the market or not. And hence, we introduced the concept of TAM, of total addressable market and the market penetration, where we could really look at the United States. If you have 1.5 million users on your platform, but that entire market that you can tap in is about 200 million, then you've only, you've less than 1% of that market on your platform. Th so that means you have a massive opportunity still to grow. Well, if you look at Spain, for instance, with a market penetration of 12.5%, you kind of know that that growth that you could anticipate is probably going to be a lot fewer. So we really embarked on this project to basically contextualize our uh, user numbers and to see whether we could to use total addressable market and market penetration for uh, uh, different of growth projects. On to Marcos. Thank you, Bobby. Um, so um, I want to, to walk you through the road to market penetration estimation. 
So the top layer definition is very simple. It's the division of the number of active users in a given month over the population. But we partnered with Carto because we wanted to understand the population, not only the overall population or over 18 population, but we also wanted to understand, uh, understand it at different levels uh, for different genders, for different age bands. And we're also calculating it at different geo levels. We want to understand the population at a country level, of course, but we also want to understand the population at the city cluster or at the metro level. And I will uh, walk you through how we generated the city clusters of metropolitan areas. Why? Uh, city polygons in general, in most of the uh, geo databases, are very narrow and um, fail to capture the big picture. For example, the New York City area uh, is divided into Manhattan, Bronx, Queens, Brooklyn, etc. It's great to have that level of granularity, but when you want to understand the big picture, you want to have a, a different solution to understand uh, market penetration, for example. So how we tackle this issue, uh, we used DBSCAN, a density-based clustering algorithm, and convex and concave hulls. And we built a model that captures for each country and its city clusters the most densely populated areas automatically. So this is a uh, snapshot of the road to market penetration estimation. So we start with coordinates, we then um, run the DBSCAN algorithm on top of the generated clusters, we use the convex hull uh, uh, algorithm uh, using Python, and then we enrich those new generated polygons using Carto. So here, uh, this is a, uh, a snapshot, a screenshot of Carto Builder, and uh, the map visualizer we use. And here we can see points of interest uh, related to food, like restaurants, bars in the northeast coast of uh, the US. So here you can see a lot of points, and here you can pretty much understand the, the distribution. And human eye can pretty much understand where the metro areas are, but we needed to uh, generate a shape for each of those. So after running the DBSCAN algorithm and the convex hull, we generated polygons that captured the metropolitan areas pretty much. So here we can see uh, four uh, metropolitan areas, New York, Philadelphia, Baltimore, and Washington, D.C. Here, uh, this is a little bit uh, a more detailed view on how the model works. First of all, it generates uh, or it separates the cluster point, And then we, on top of that, we run the convex hull algorithm for each of the metropolitan areas to basically understand where are the boundaries. And then we generate a, uh, a shape to capture that new area. So here is a more, uh, uh, a more detailed look into the US. And here we can see that the model captured the majority of the metropolitan areas across the country. And yeah, we can run this not only for the US, but for all countries around the world. So how do we estimate population? Now that we understand where are our metro metropolitan areas, we need to understand the population. So um, we are using the Carto Spatial Features Dataset and powered by data enrichment, which is the process of our matching data with new variables uh, using spatial joins. We have extracted each city, cluster, or metropolitan area's total population, disaggregated by age band and gender. So it's very simple. Uh, we are using Carto Frames, which is the Carto uh, Python library. So here, as you can see, in two cells, we managed to enrich this data set and calculate the population. In the first cell, we can see that we just fetched the data set from the Carto Data Observatory. It's called Spatial Features. And in the second step, we basically enrich our city clusters data set with the chosen variable. So there you can see in the variables parameter that we chose to fetch total population, female population, female uh, 20 to 24, a male 20 to 24, up to 64 year old. And for countries, it's actually uh, very simple. Uh, here we didn't need to generate a new shape because we understand the country boundaries. So it's very simple using Carto frames here. We just fetch the data set again, and as a second step, we just query with the data set grouping by country, and it returns the population by country, etc. 
as an output, we were able to solve the uh, division. We have, we, of course, under, we have the number of active users in a given month at the city cluster level, at the country level, but we now have also population split by country and city and also split by gender and age band. Thanks. Bobby? Sure. So how we are we going to be using this now? What use cases does it enable? So first of all, on the right hand side, we're going to be using this for growth and international expansion. Um, we want to see, because we know that kind of market growth is kind of a function of how heavily and densely penetrated the market is. So we're really using this right now for market growth. And we're using it for internationalization to get a sense what countries have a total addressable market. What market have we already penetrated there? And obviously, by pulling in different data sources on GDP, purchasing, uh, purchasing power, you can kind of get a sense what markets constitute a big opportunity for us. In the middle, we're using it for intra-market growth. Sometimes you can go attack a complete market, but a lot of markets have different city clusters of metropolitan areas, where you may want to take an approach focusing on, on those different metro areas. Well, we can use now those city clusters that Marcus just talked about and get a sense which market areas we're doing well in. How highly have we penetrated New York? Have we tapped the potential there? And if so, have we done that as well in the West? If our market penetration is higher in New York than in, than in LA, for instance, we kind of know we've probably got bigger growth opportunities there. And lastly, we're using this for segment-based opportunities. As we can now have the term and the market penetration on an H-band gender level, we can get much more granular. We can really see whether there are outlier cities where we see that we have, we're underperforming for Gen Zs compared to how big the market there is. Or cities where we're overperforming for millennials or Gen X. So by using this data, we can get a sense of to what generations we need to cater to and adapt our content, our communication, and all our market efforts, marketing efforts accordingly. And so these are the current use cases that this enables. But what does the future hold for us here? First of all, we really want to democratize attempt through self-service analytics. And you can think of self-service analytics through exposing this in dashboards, so all sorts of business users can download it to Excel or generate their custom reports on top of it. But we also have quite a big analyst community at Bumble. So for us, democratizing here also means that we do that catering towards the different consumption patterns. So making sure this is very easily queryable in our data warehouse. So analysts can take it in to all of their custom analysis. Secondly, we want to incorporate a couple of different lenses. So the term that you saw really related to the entire 18 to 64 population, which is kind of a ceiling of what we can probably achieve. If you think about Bumble as a dating product, for instance, you probably want to reduce that term by uh, overlaying singles. Or you probably want to get a sense of, well, what is the total population willing to use dating apps? So one future road to take is that we'll want to make these overlays uh, and offer them in self-service solutions as well. So that business users, depending on their use case, are we looking for Bumble Date? Are we looking more for um, you know, Bumble for France, which could tap into a wider term, and that you, know, you can make those adjustments accordingly. And lastly, we're using it um, in a lot of different pro uh, other projects. We're probably using it to get a bit of a sense of what stage projects are, uh, of markets are. We're using it to base some of our planning efforts around. So um, the TAM work has really enabled a lot of new projects and a lot of new innovation within Bumble. And I guess lastly, right, we have over 100 open positions. So we're always looking for new talent. And uh, if you're interested in joining Bumble, if you want to know more, reach out to any of us. Reach out to Kieran, who is also in the audience. Probably doesn't want me addressing him right now. Um, tap us on the shoulder or uh, go to our website. And thank you very much. Thank you.
and I guess we probably got some time for Q&A as well. So if anyone has a question. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really interesting and um, insightful. Thank you. Um, I was just trying to understand when you kind of did your um, um, a cluster and you have the the outline for each area. Do you check or how do you ensure? It wasn't quite clear that that overlays directly with the. Carto, is it the Carto uh, the yeah. data set? Mm -hmm. So how do you know that yeah. your area overlaps? You're looking at the yeah. same kind of. So region. basically, the the clustering step um, happens before we use or utilize the Carto data set. So the clustering step is to generate a shape or an area that uh, basically uh, basically encapsules. Um, cities across the New York City area, right? So for example, we generated, as you probably saw, New York City, we uh, clustered uh, Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, etc. Once we generated that data set, we enriched it and we calculated the total population in that area using CARTO uh, external data set. So we use the spatial joints from CARTO to calculate the number of, uh, of people living there. Outline exactly to yeah to work out exactly to, right gotcha yeah. thank you thank you hi um, so one of the slides that you showed so I think it showed like POIs around food um, yeah. can you talk a little bit about how you got and are using that data you talked about you know, generalizing kind of uh, geospatial clusters, but having the POIs is actually quite interesting. Can you talk a little bit more to that? So sorry, I cannot hear you. Um, can you um, repeat? Sorry. Yeah. So one of the signs that you um, yeah. showed was around points of interest around food. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit more how kind of you came to that data uh, and are using that? We're we're just using that uh, data set uh, just as an example here uh, because yeah we cannot share uh, our user coordinates uh, publicly. Yeah. Yeah, so we just use it, uh, food points of interest as an example. Yeah, do you use um, the total addressable market analytics to um, feed back to the user experience and improve the app as well for the users? Um, do you want to go through that? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, like, like indirectly, right? Because we, we want to make sure that in every country that we operate, we have some sort of localization going on. Um, not every culture is the same. Um, at the same time, you know, if we all have our data centers in Europe, latency can be really, really high. Uh, so we want to obviously use that. Um, so we use it indirectly. Once we've got a strong foothold in a certain region, then we may actually decide accordingly we want to build a bit, a bit more of a base there. I think all the way in the back there. Um, so you mentioned being able to filter this um, data for singles, for example, for certain use cases. Can you tell us a bit more about how you got the data on, um, or how you how you defined uh, the level of singles in each area, please? Yeah, sure. So I guess. The data set that, that Marcus just talked about is not the only external data set that we've been using. Um, I guess one of the sort of interesting results from COVID is that the amount of external data sets that we're using within Bumble has really exploded. We're using stuff from stringency index to cases, vaccination rates, Google mobility data. Also, we are tapping into uh, a survey platform called GWI, Global Web Index, which runs a massive survey all across the globe. 45 con uh, countries are operating for a whole range of, of, of questions. Um, obviously, this is secondary research. We're tapping into someone else's research already done. It's great. We don't have to do the effort ourselves. And we can pull that data then into the same tool that Marcus uh, just explained. And 
GWI has estimates on, on, a go, on a country level of how many singles are there. They even have those estimates in certain uh, DMAs, designated metro areas, which is sometimes kind of similar to the city cluster concept that Marcus discussed. So we, we, we can use that d and pull in that data to make adjustments accordingly. Very interesting, thank you. All right. I All think right. Uh, we're out of questions. Thanks, everyone, for your, uh, for your attention. And uh, I hope it was uh, enjoyable. Thank you.